Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Joni Young and I'm going to show you two brushes to painting the easiest sunset. Stay tuned and hit subscribe. Okay, so working on an 11 by 14 canvas, I just painted it with a light gray. You can use any gray that you want or just paint directly on white canvas. I like the gray because I feel like it makes all the other colors pop just a little bit more. Here's the colors, lemon yellow, it's a cool yellow, neon red, you can use any red that you want, and I've also got some titanium white. Be sure to look below the video for the full list of colors, alternatives, and brushes we're using today, plus some links to things you might enjoy. So let's get started. I've got a number 30 filbert brush here just for creating um, the thicker, bigger strokes for the coverage on the background. You can use any big brush that you like. I'm just going to get it a bit wet, scoop up some of my neon red and start pulling it across from one side of the canvas to the next, just below halfway for our horizon. Back and forth, blending that paint out. I'm going to leave a little gap in between the middle just below and come in on either side right at the very bottom so just from the left and the right pulling and flicking in towards the center now the center i'm leaving um, just blank like that because it's going to have the brightest reflection from our sun of course so we'll be coming in there with a little bit of our yellow and white later on now i'm just going to do a light dry brush with what's left over in my brush above for the sunset so just a little bit here and there Without washing my brush off, I'll take a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. This combined with a tiny bit of that red in my brush will give me a few orange tones and uh, make it a little bit uh, peachy looking and mixed with a bit of that yellow and white. We're going to get some nice, bright, pretty uh, sunset colors here. So we're going to start building up this bright area right here, a few different brush strokes, little slide back and forth with the very end of the brush. And then for, for fuller width and thicker brush strokes, you're just going to use the whole width of that brush and push flat. Now up here in the sky, and see this is what I mean, look at how pretty those colors look because we've got that gray underpainting. It makes a big, big difference. It almost starts to look a little bit like a violet shade, doesn't it? But it, all it is, I promise, I'm just using a gray, a light gray paint. So I'm gonna just continue here, building up these bright, bright highlights by adding more and more white. Uh, for the sky up above, you can just make little uh, scoops here and there, shorter brush strokes, have a little fun with it. You don't have to follow every single direction and try to mimic my um, brush strokes and what they look like. It's a bit hard to do that sometimes. Just practice your brush strokes and yours will look pretty similar to mine, uh, just a little bit different. Now we're gonna go up and over like we're painting a rainbow and then we're gonna just fill that in. It's half a circle. We're gonna uh, have it just end right there on our horizon line. We're gonna fill this in. Now what you wanna do, the ratio is 90 white to 10% of the yellow, okay? We want it to be really, really bright here. And then it just really pops out against that background. So fill it all in. Again, you can use a different brush if you want. I like the filbert brush because it's got that round end and it makes it a lot smoother and simpler to for curvy lines and curvy things and round shapes. Once we get our basic shape here and fill it in, you want to take a few minutes to dry your painting off before coming in with the next layers. So now I'm switching over from that big filbert brush to my small filbert brush. I've got a number four here. I've added two new colors, cobalt blue and black. So I'm going to take a little bit of red, black, blue, a little bit of white, and I'm going to make a really pretty smoky plum color. So depending on how much of each color you're using, your shade will change slightly, but no matter what your ratio is, it's going to look pretty no matter what. It just depends on your preference. So if you want it to be a little bit more on the cool side, then add a little bit more blue. And if you want it to be lighter, add a bit more white, okay? So just go line it up right on the horizon, and we're just going to go right over top of that red line 
and we're going to start coming in with light brush strokes adding little hints of low-lying clouds here again i'm liking the filbert brush for this because i can get soft rounded uh, shapes to my clouds and i have more control using a smaller brush if you don't have a small filbert brush you can go ahead and look for any round brush you might have like a uh, number two round brush number four six whatever size you feel comfortable with it also depends on the size of the clouds that you want to add so of course it's just uh, uh, obvious to go for a smaller brush when you're working on something small right and and go a size up when you're working on something a little bit bigger so I'm going to just mix up these colors again um, not concentrating too much on using more red or more blue I'm just looking at that color and wanting it to look uh, like a smoky purple color and I'm going to go ahead and start adding more building up my shadows and this is really going to start to make the depth of this painting, um, make the whole painting pop, really. It just accents and complements all the highlights, as well as all the colors. Everything's complementing one another, and it's starting to take on more of a 3D image. So you're going to take a flat painting, a flat image from, well, first flat to 2D, and now we're taking it to 3D by adding our deep, beautiful, contrasting shadows here. So just add a little bit here and there on either side. Um, I like to concentrate on the far uh, edges on the left and then on the right. That also helps to just draw our eyes into our focal point and the light being in the center of this painting. Now for the top, we're going to start coming in and adding some clouds on the top. We're going to go over top of the sun, and I know that's terrifying, right? It's scary to paint over something like that, but if you take that leap of faith, if you go and face your fears like that, you're going to love your painting. You're going to just level up uh, in your skills so quickly. So just go ahead and do it, guys. Jump in with me and do this, and if you're nervous at all, just practice beforehand, okay? And I'm just going to take a little bit extra white this time to make it the clouds a little bit softer to start. See how you can turn your brush so that the handle's facing towards uh, the sky or the top of the canvas. And you can also have it painting towards uh, the floor. So turn your brush around from top to bottom and that will give you some different looking clouds making your sky and your clouds look more realistic okay because you really want to stay away from creating um, something that's a uniform pattern um, that's the quickest way to make a painting look uh, phony and uh, so as if you if you feel yourself starting to wanting to make a pattern and you notice that happening stop what you're doing change the direction you're holding your brush and just make it more random so add another cloud right next to a cloud or partially over top of an existing cloud uh, that'll make a big big difference so you can see here that i'm going to just really alternate with my ratio of white to red to blue a little bit of black and i'm going to make all these clouds a little bit different so sometimes they're going to have a little bit more warmth to them from the red and sometimes they're going to have a little bit more uh, blue in them or a little bit more white or black so really switch it up if you prefer one color more than more than the other then feel free and go ahead to stick to that but i i really take time to look at sunsets and study them and if you look closely all the clouds are a little bit different the lighting is different on them they don't all look the same and that's what makes them so unique because uh, they're all different and when you take a bunch of different things and put them together it creates something really beautiful and that's why I love painting sunsets so much so here you can see I'm coming in and I'm going to go over the sun I think that I mentioned earlier you want to make sure that you um, dry your underpainting off first um, if not if you're adding these clouds uh, over top of a wet painting underneath um, just be prepared that you're going to pick up some of that paint and that's going to alter the color you may or may not want it could work in your favor 
um, but if to be on the safe side just take a few minutes to dry it off I just use a little hair dryer I keep my studio on the cool side so that slows down the, the drying aspect of my acrylics um, depending on the temperature in your studio if it's really warm then you're gonna be fighting that uh, drying time your your acrylics are going to be drying much more quickly so you can slow that down again by keeping your room at a cool temperature so I'm just going to keep continuing along here adding these clouds some of them are going to be a little bit darker so that really um, gives this painting a punch too so some just one or two clouds I'm going to add a, I'm just going to add a little bit more depth with my blue and my black those are the two dominant darkest colors I'm using on my palette today and I'll continue going up to the top of the canvas now sometimes I have less paint on my brush and it'll just be transparent it'll be see-through and they'll look a lot uh, softer and kind of mistier looking so that all plays a part in creating um, a landscape like this and a sunset up here I've got a thin amount of paint on my brush and I've you can see it's more on the purpley the blue cool purple side so I've got more of the ultramarine blue that I'm using at this point so here you can see how much I'm using with a, just a hint of that red in there um, and you can alter it at any time if you feel like it's just too blue and it's standing out then just go ahead and balance that out by adding a little bit more of the red and a little bit of white even you'll get a really beautiful blue violet shade one of my favorites sure you have a clean brush for the next step I'm gonna pick up just straight titanium white I like using titanium white because it's the coolest and the brightest in my opinion and I'm gonna go inside the Sun leaving the outer edges and the rest of it that soft buttery yellow and I'm just gonna make this Sun really really bright emphasizing on that uh, inviting light that it brings to this painting it's still going to dry a little bit darker so I know that it's not going to look pure white once it's dry um, it's gonna just kind of dull a tiny bit but we'll be left with a nice bright bright glowing Sun I'll add a few hints of this uh, down below in the reflection in the water just sliding my brush back and forth thin free loose brush strokes again with that titanium white and I'm just gonna get a little bit close in between kind of weave around carefully in between these clouds and again at any time if you feel like it's just too bright and you're worried that you've lost that soft buttery yellow it's never too late to go ahead and make that color again acrylic is very forgiving I mentioned this in most of my videos so that you um, if you're just new to my channel and you're just being introduced to acrylics now uh, it's very forgiving so you can always go back and layer over that's what I love about it I'm now gonna work in a little bit of saturation in and around between my brightest highlights highlights and that soft butter yellow so my lemon yellow my red and a bit of white or just red and yellow and we'll just add a few more shades and saturate some of these areas up a little bit more concentrating around and above the clouds a uh, little bit here and there in the water and anywhere else that you want to add it you could even get away with adding some above in the clouds up in the sky and um, make sure that if you happen to get any blue on your brush to to clean that off uh, that will alter the color that you're adding if you want it to just strictly be um, your warm colors right now so see in here this is what I mean you can come in and you can enhance the sky um, just by adding a few uh, little streaks and wiggles with your brush a little bit here and there and it, it just adds so much life to it and it's these are easy this is simple simple brush strokes 
Um, this isn't uh, for any advanced level. So no matter what skill level you're at, if you're just a beginner, you can follow along with me and paint this today. Now I'm going to go in with a clean brush, my red, my blue, and just a little bit of white again. And I'm going to add, just going to sneak in a little bit of depth inside some of these clouds. So I'm not completely going over the whole shape of them. I'm leaving the outside the lighter shade. So going inside, enhancing, enhancing some of them. You can also do this um, with white and doing the reverse. So you can add lighter shades inside some of your clouds, leaving the outer edges a little bit dark. So that will equally make your painting uh, really pop out and add a lot more depth. All I'm doing here is just I lift up my bar from my easel, um, exposing the top of the canvas so I can just get that covered up and fill that in with those existing colors, the blue, red, and the white. And I'm just going to add a few more um, details to this painting, but it's pretty much all done. I have a second part to this video. It's already here on my channel and it's where I add a beautiful mermaid in silhouette right in the front uh, on the beach. So I'll be sure to leave a link for that below this video or at the end. And if you want to see more seascapes and tropical paintings, lots of how to paint water, all sorts of different types of water, um, be sure to check out my playlist, uh, Tropical and Seascape, and I'll also leave a link down below for that for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy watching the rest of this video as I add just a little bit here and there, more shadows, highlights, and saturation. Thank you so much for all your support on my channel. I'm really close to reaching 200,000 subscribers, and I have you guys to thank for that. So I hope you continue with your painting journey wherever it takes you. Know that I'm here cheering you guys along, and I want to continue motivating you, supporting you, inspiring you, and maybe just being a little art friend for you from across the world, wherever you are. So take care, everybody, and I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye!